What's going on guys, Jonathan here with TLD with a hands-on tour and demo of the all-new iPhoto application for the iPad, which just hit the App Store today for $4.99, but you must upgrade to iOS 5.1 before you can use this. So let's go ahead and open up the application, see what it looks like, and by default you can see we have our albums, we can swipe over, fail, to photos, then to events, and lastly to journals. We can also individually select the tabs up top, so let's go ahead and go back to photos, select a picture, and let's select these two monkeys right here. Now towards the top left hand corner you can see all of our photos. We can switch back and forth between them. Let's use this photo. For example, we got a little flower. Towards the bottom middle section we have a auto enhance feature which is pretty self-explanatory. It's going to automatically enhance it. And if we move up to the top right hand corner we can see what it looks like before the effect. So it's a little dull. This kind of just gives a little more vibrance. Kind of darkens and beefs it up a little bit. So you can see it does a pretty good job. It's not going to work perfectly every time. But for most instances it's going to do a really good job. To the right of that we can rotate the photo 90 degrees. Let's get it back to the original state. We can flag the photo. We can hold that down for more options. So let's go ahead and unflag it. Got a little sound effect going on. We can favorite the photo little ding. You can actually turn these sound effects on and off as well from the home screen. And then lastly, we can hide the picture. So from here, you may notice it's not going anywhere, but if we select a new picture, you notice it's gone from the little roll up in the left-hand corner. Now for more in-depth controls and editing towards the bottom left-hand corner, we have the crop feature. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to drag to crop. If you don't want to crop it, no big deal. Right here, this little dial right here, we can actually adjust the angle of the picture. So it kind of looks like we tilted the camera a certain way. So you can see how clean, how intuitive, how easy it works with the touch screen. So let's go ahead and leave it like that for the sake of this video. And let's go ahead and jump uh, maybe to this Android dude for another little instance of this application. So right here, there's actually a ton of different options and they actually explain it very well. All you gotta do is press the question mark up top and it'll give you guides for everything. So we can drag the photo to adjust parameters that's going to saturate it. Now down here I really dig how much control you have over this single line right here. Now by dragging this inward we can adjust the shadows. By dragging this part inward we can adjust the highlights. We have contrast which is obviously going to tweak it a little bit. We have brightness so brighter, darker, and you can see how instantaneous everything is. So if we go over to the color section, they really lay it out. If you really have no idea about photography or editing, we have a master saturation section. So we're going to saturate the crap out of it. Or if you have like a picture of the sky, you're going to increase the saturation there, enhance the blueness of the sky. That's not going to really show right here. But since this is an Android dude, we get a greenery section. Now obviously that's for plants and uh, things of that nature, but this dude is green. So let's go ahead and drag this and that's going to enhance the greenness of the picture. If you have a picture of people, we got skin tones, and then we also have white balance to the right of that. And you actually have a lot of options on here. So for this instance, let's go ahead and jump over to this picture. Got another little leaf going on. So let's go to white balance, open that up again. Now we have original, sun, cloudy, flash, shade, incandescent, fluorescent, face balance, and custom, which is really cool. So let's go ahead and jump between a few of these. And it was cloudy when I took this picture and you can see that kind of works the best. So let's go ahead and go to undo, select that. Now if we have this little settings bar in the right corner, we can also revert at any time. We can reset the color. That's gonna go back. And we'll go to this little cup of tea for the last set of options. So got a little detail going on. Right here are the tool brushes. So let's go ahead and select that. Kind of magically pops out. We have repair. Red eye, saturate, desaturate, lighten, darken, sharpen, and soften. Now what these are going to do is going to give you precise control over a particular part of the picture. So let's say you don't want to actually edit the whole thing, but you want to do a specific section. So we'll select maybe uh, the saturate, for example. Let's go ahead and turn the question mark off so we can see kind of the layout. And right here we have this little green tag. Now if we want to saturate that, all I'm doing is dragging around that. And that's going to enhance the saturation of just what I'm touching. We go back to the brushes, open it up so I can see the layout. We'll go to darken and say now I want to darken this section. You can see how it's following me. So it went kind of like a bright green to a dark green. And you can see how responsive it is. So just for messing with it, you guys can see how well it works. Lastly, we have the effects section. So we have a few different tabs. We have warm and cool, duo tone, black and white, aura, vintage, and artistic. So we can select one of these. Uh, we'll go to vintage, for example. And we can actually drag and adjust the parameters right here. So that's actually going to change the settings. So you can see that's going to give it kind of a grungy, kind of dirty look. We're really going kind of the opposite spectrum, increasing it. Right in the middle, it's going to bring it back. And again, right here, we can reset that, remove it. 
And that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have downloaded this for either the iPhone or the iPad, let me know what you guys think of it. If you guys miss any coverage on the new iPad, uh, the third generation iPad, or the next generation Apple TV, go ahead and click this video right here. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys later.